गुलेन बैरे सिंड्रोम सिनोनिम्स ए आई डी पी एक्यूट इडियोपैथिक डी माइलिनेटिंग पॉलीन्यूरोपैथी ए आई पी एक्यूट इन्फेक्टिव पॉलीन्यूरोपैथी एल जी बी एस एस लॉन्ड्रे गुलेन बैरे स्ट्रोल सिंड्रोम ए आई पी एक्यूट इडियोपैथिक पॉलीन्यूरोपैथी डेफिनेशंस जी वी एस इज डिटर्माइंड एज एक्यूट और सब एक्यूट सीमेट्रिकल प्री डोमिनेंटली मोटर न्यूरोपैथी इन्वॉल्विंग वन और मोर पेरिफ्रल नर्व्स फ्रिक्वेंटली इट मे इन्वॉल्व द फेसियल एंड अदर क्रैनियल नर्व्स डज नॉट हैव एनी एटियोलॉजी रिचेस ए पीक ऑफ डिजेबिलिटी बाय नाइन वीक्स इट हैज ए मेजोफेजिक कोर्स एंड एंड सब यूजली विथ रिकवरी एटियोलॉजी मीन्स कॉजेस Although there is no definite etiology of GBS there are certain factors which have been found to predispose the occurrence of GBS Number 1 age common between 15 to 25 years of age group sex common in females viral infections V zoster mumps and cytomegalovirus it is also associated with mycoplasm and campylobacter infections post immunization immunization with both live or dead vaccines or antitoxins post trauma next immunodeficiency then drugs in drugs prolonged use of antidepressant drugs like zimetidine or gold therapy which are neurotoxins and found to cause gbs next autoimmune due to the presence of an antigen cd positive t cells surgery After 4 to 5 weeks of a major surgery patient may show signs of GBS which can be attested to the following reasons release of neural antigens that provokes autoimmune response due to surgical stress because of blood transfusion explanations both antibody and cell mediated reactions to peripheral nerve myelin are involved some patients produce antibodies to myelin glycoproteins or glycosides other develops a t cell mediate next segmental demyelination results with secondary axonal changes and damage perivascular infiltration with lymphocytes occurs within the peripheral nerves and nerve roots lymphocytes and macrophages release cytotoxic substances cytokines which damage myelin sheath when axonal damage and nerve death occurs then the recovery is prolonged pathology let us know about the chronological order of the pathology of gulen barre syndrome it first begins with disease progress and affect the spinal roots and nerve processes followed by it primarily involves squamous cells then resulting in segmental demyelination followed by if axon remains initial impulse can be conducted with reduced velocity followed by then axons are degenerated and complete conduction block occurs so there is associated perivascular lymphocytic inflammatory exudates of peripheral nervous system and other symptoms like heart lungs and kidney problems clinical features so the clinical features of gulen barre syndrome are patients have a clear history of upper respiratory tract infection one to three weeks prior to neuropathy there is involvement of gastrointestinal infections three types according to clinical features are ascending paralysis descending paralysis and miller fisher variant syndromes begin with myalgia paresthesia of lower limb followed by weakness let us now analyze the involvement chronology in ascending paralysis first lower limb weakness then followed by ascents to involve pelvic girdle muscles then abdominal and thoracic muscle involvement followed by upper limb involvement on examination of ascending type so the clinical features of ascending type are symmetrical weakness of muscles loss of muscle tone flaccidity reduced dtr that is deep tendon reflex frequently involvement of seventh cranial nerve leading to bilateral facial weakness oculomotor cranial nerve is also involved leading to ptosis in severe cases dysphagia dysarthria 
and diplopia occurs paralysis progress about 10 days then remain unchanged recovery phase takes place in about 6 months to 2 years let us now look into the chronology involvement of descending paralysis pharyngeal muscles involvement first then followed by cervical and brachial muscle involvement then trunk muscle involvement then the involvement of pelvic girdle muscles and lastly lower limb involvement on examination of descending type the clinical features majorly for descending type is pharyngeal muscle involvement now let us look into the miller fisher variant of gulen barrett syndrome so the clinical features are ophthalmoplegia reflexia ataxia these symptoms are commonly seen in the type of variant without any significant limb weakness complication of gbs respiratory impairments leading to respiratory failures autonomic instability that is retention of urine and orthostatic hypotension bulb palsy secondary infections such as respiratory tract urinary tract and gastrointestinal tract infections prolonged immobilization leading to pressure sores dvt heterotrophic ossification myositis ossificans fluid and electrolyte imbalance pupil edema now look at the diagnosis of gulen barre syndrome so first diagnosis test is ncv test that is nerve conduction velocity test the findings are prolonged latency period reduced amplitude slow frequency but when carried out early in the illness may present normal values inference finding of multifocal demyelination soon develops with slowing motor conduction with conduction block and prolonged distal latency now second point is ancillary investigations performed to identify any precipitating infections that is viral or bacterial studies electrolytes are checked for inappropriate secretions of anti diuretics hormone csf studies cell count normal protein count elevated ultrasound of the abdomen is done now look into the differential diagnosis poliomyelitis myositis ossificans and myasthenia gravis now we look into the medical treatment of gulen barre syndrome so the medical treatment follows as prevention of complications pressure sores frequently change in the position alpha bed that is water plus air beds dvt that is deep vein thrombosis leave elevation effleurage distal to proximal stroking low molecular weight heparin injection ankle toe exercises respiratory complications ventilator support breathing exercises reduction of urine catheterization plasma pheresis change in plasma level in the blood needs exchange of 200 to 250 ml of plasma per kg body weight intravenous immunoglobulin therapy that is 0.45 per kg for 5 days now the important part of the gulen barre syndrome is the physiotherapeutic management so the pt management in gbs are as follows so first of all we should know causes for disability in gbs so the primary causes are muscle weakness loss or impairment of sensory input from joints muscles spine and skin pain respiratory insufficiency secondary causes disease and neurogenic wasting muscle fatigue cardio respiratory deconditioning contractures poor sleep and confusion now we should look into the aims of pt management which are very important so the aims are maintain clear airways prevent lung infections maintain range of motion support joint in a functional position to minimize damage or deformity assist in prevention of pressure sores maintain peripheral circulation provide psychological support now we move forward for the interventions or the measures taken in pt management so the major or intervention is divided into three phases that is acute phase intervention sub acute phase intervention and recovery phase 
so first of all we look into the acute phase in acute phase the symptoms and the treatments are poor respiratory function that is followed by chest care postural drainage and suction joint and soft tissue pain passive and accessory movements careful functionality desensitization with rubbing vibrating heat and ice progressive weakness assisted and passive movement positioning autonomic dysfunction awareness of postural hypotension and cardiac arrhythmias time assurance now sub acute phase so the pt management in sub acute phase are pressure sores regular positioning passive movements neuropraxia awareness positioning sensory loss encouraging patient to observe limbs when moved and to concentrate in the movements performed low confidence reassurance encouragement and introduction of exercises of patients who have recovered disorientation constant input of time and place discussion of news and topics of interest now we move towards our last and the final phase that is recovery phase so the pt management are weakness that is for strengthening exercises and functional activities joint and soft tissue pain ice heat vibration and ultrasound tendency to fatigue short sessions with frequent rests lack of postural sensation joint approximation weight bearing activities sensory input balance reduction and compensatory use of ice autonomic dysfunction tiltable tremors reassure that it will improve when muscle gain strength emotional factors reassurance understanding and encouragement incomplete recovery provision of assistive aids example calipers home exercises and periodic assessments